Hi, welcome to Second Spring, a podcast from and for women in their midlife, living a healthy and fulfilling chapter. I am your host, Kit Yoon, a holistic health practitioner on a mission to create a community of empowered women. You will hear stories and gain inspiration that will motivate you to make these middle years your best yet. As they say, empowered women, empower women. It does take a village, and that's exactly what you'll get here. Let's go to the show. Hello, friends, and welcome back to season two of the Second Spring podcast. It has been a minute since I last recorded an episode for you. It is so good to be back. It is now officially spring where I live and when I am recording this. It's been a couple of days since the spring equinox, and it is timely that we begin the next season of Second Spring Podcast. A lot happened between the first and the second seasons in my own little world. I had lots of travels in the first few months of the year in 2024, really more than normal. If you think I travel a lot, this was extra traveling for me. It's kind of got ridiculous when I ran out of the dozens of choices of movies that were available on the flights that I took because I had watched all the ones that I wanted to see already. It was really a sign that I needed to stop traveling already because there's nothing else to watch. I got to see some really great movies, though. Let's see if I can remember a couple of them. Wonder. This was a book that my daughter and I read years ago, and I didn't even know that it came out as a movie with Julia Roberts and Owen Wilson. Wonder. It's a great movie. It will shake you, especially if you're a parent. Let's see. What else did I see that I really enjoyed? Call Me By my name, call me by your name, call me by your name, I think is apparently a classic that I never saw. Beautiful, wonderful story. So those are a couple that I remember. I watched so many that I can't possibly remember them all. But anyway, it's time to stop traveling for now and settle down and start doing something like recording podcast episodes for you again. I got to see so many people, though, during my travels, I really have no reason to complain. I got to see my parents, my brother, who both live in Thailand on the other side of the world. We got to see our kids, both of them. And I saw a lot of friends on the East Coast and on the West Coast. One of them was my dearest and oldest friends from high school. So no reason to complain at all. I got to spend quality time with all of those people. And if it took me to fly all over the globe, it was worth it. So I feel very fortunate to say the least. What also happened in the last few weeks is that I am ending my acupuncture sabbatical. I decided to take some time off the first part of the year If you had read my post in the Second Spring Chronicle, you might remember or saw that we were planning to actually make a move out of Ohio. My husband and I, once the kids left the nest, we gave ourselves some options. So it was unclear where we were going to be. And so it was a good idea to give myself a little break create a little sabbatical after 10 years of doing acupuncture and other modalities continuously for that length of time. I didn't know when I was going to come out of the sabbatical, mostly because I wasn't sure what we were doing, but we decided to stay in Columbus, Ohio for the time being. And it feels really great to make that decision to come back to landing on both feet, knowing exactly what's happening for at least the next few years. So I don't do well with uncertainties. I don't know about you. I don't do well with being idle either. And I wonder if you're like that. I am so much more grounded. I feel more grounded when I have structure, when I have certainty, 
when I have things scheduled on my calendar, even on weekends and on vacation, even if they're fun things or activities, I like to put them down and have them be like this anchor of sort so that I know what's happening. So it's definitely been a little bit uneasy and uncertain the last few months. So I could say that the rebirth of this podcast for season one came out of the time when things felt that uncertainty. And I wasn't sure where we were going to be and what I was going to do. And I know that I can create a podcast from anywhere. I can talk to anyone from anywhere in the world. So this came out from that time of wanting to feel anchored somewhere, somehow, even without knowing what was happening. So that being said, I hope you got to listen to season one and the episodes from that season when you got to hear from multiple wonderful women of Bexley. Bexley, Ohio is where we're living. We've been here for 13 plus years now. And I was so happy and excited to feature, to give the stage or to give the mic to some wonderful people that I got to know, that I love their stories, that I wanted to share their stories. Because as we know, empowered women empower women. So we have 10 episodes in the first season. If you haven't listened to them, there are nine Bexley women who were featured in the episodes. And I was going to go over very briefly in case you have not listened or want to go back to listening to some of these episodes. Just talk a little bit about each one of them to maybe spark an interest in you or remind you that, oh, I wanted to go and listen to that episode. So we started off with Liza, Liza Moore in episode number two. This was actually the one of the reasons that I wanted to start up the podcast again. Liza's story of the devastating loss of her daughter was really impactful for me and how she dealt with grief when she found meditation and what she's doing now to help herself find happiness again. I have gotten to know Liza personally. She's a great friend, and I was just so grateful that she was willing to come on the podcast and share her journey in the stories. So definitely, if you have not listened to Liza's episode, that is episode two, then AJ Oishi, I want to grow up and be like AJ. <laughs> she is such a wonderful artist, a beautiful soul. AJ lives her life with so much intention, and she's just a great example of how we can take care of our future self by taking the actions necessary right now so that you can expect a healthier, more fulfilling, more, this is the type of future that you want for yourself while getting to enjoy the benefits of the lifestyle changes in the process. Listen to AJ, episode three, definitely. Nicole O'Brien was episode four. Okay, so I also want to grow up and be like Nicole. Nicole is a doctor at Children's Hospital here in Columbus. She's also a scientist, a mother of four. Her story, as much as Liza's story, was one of the stories that I wanted to sh definitely share with the world. Nicole came to me for acupuncture a few years back because she lost her voice. And from that time onward, we got to worked together and I got to know her very well. And that story in itself, you just have to listen and you'll be so inspired by how she overcame challenges around the adoption of her children in the Congo and how she lost those children from to child trafficking. And there's just so much in that episode that I love. You'll also want to hear what Nicole has planned for 
celebrating her 50th birthday. That's something that I'm going to try to copy as well. So Nicole O'Brien was in episode four. Then there was Dr. Melissa Briggs Phillips in episode five. I had so much fun talking to Dr. Melissa. She's got that feisty energy and vibe that I want my therapist to have. Melissa is a therapist. She works at the Mindset Integrative Clinic right now in Columbus, Ohio. We talked a lot about what she does, but also personally about that sense of belonging that neither of us felt or had organically growing up. And we had to find our way to experiencing that sense of belonging even today. Then episode six, I had Rebecca Ness on. Rebecca is a fellow acupuncturist, Chinese medicine doctor. She credits Chinese medicine to her feeling amazing in her early 50s. And we discovered that we share a lot of similar backgrounds before landing in the this city of ours, the arboretum that is Bexley. Cheryl Stolfer in episode seven walks her talk and lives her purpose like it's nobody's business. She's a master manifester. If you don't know what that is, you can listen to episode seven. But truly, every time I get to talk to Cheryl, who is an interior designer, an entrepreneur, an incredible leader, I am always in awe and I'm not really looking for a job, but if I were, I would totally sign up to work with her firm, her design firm, so that I can get to be around Cheryl and her energy every day. Cheryl is also turning 50 soon and has a really cool plan for that. So got to tune in to episode seven in the first season of Second Spring Podcast to find out what that is. Kelly Muir in episode eight, I have to say that my husband and I owe so much to Renshi Kelly, who taught our children martial arts, karate, since there were little people. We started lessons with Kelly, we, as in my children, started lessons with Kelly when we first moved here. So they were six, seven at the most. Kelly has such a unique story of growing up, and I got to read her book, Lessons from Nowhere, before I talked to her, and that was really helpful in just getting to know Kelly personally. She continues to pave an unusual path for herself in her mid-50s now, doing things that most of us would be scared to do and didn't think was possible. So... Episode eight with Kelly is something that you need to listen to. Betty Brown was episode nine. Betty has that nice, calming energy like a flowing, steady brook. I always enjoy being in Betty's presence. Betty's a holistic nurse and Ayurvedic practitioner. I have learned so much from Betty over the years around Ayurveda lifestyle, as well as smothering young adults. She's a great example of how to stay calm and be positive and encouraging and supportive of her children, no matter what is going on. So I am so grateful to have Betty in our community. And then last episode, episode 10, is when my friend and colleague, Caitlin Foss, took the podcast mic and turned it around and asked me some questions that were both insightful and totally terrifying. She asked great questions like, what are you afraid of to tell the person in front of you? What are you afraid of in general. (laughs) And if you want to know what my answer was, you can tune in to episode 10. Now, in this season two of Second Spring Podcast, we are going to focus in on wellness for midlife women. Wellness is a broad and loaded term. It is everywhere now. 
and is seemingly expected of everyone. But what is it exactly? Do we need wellness? Why do we want to strive for this concept of wellness? So having been in the wellness profession, the holistic health field for a long time, I believe in wellness because I see its importance. I see its impact in myself as well as my patients, my clients, my loved ones. The mantra that I come back to time and time again, because it's undeniably true, is that health is the greatest wealth. And you probably agree if you have faced any sort of health issues for yourself or for your loved ones, because when we don't have it, when we're not in good health, we can't really enjoy anything in life. It really doesn't matter where we live, how much money we have, what kind of car we drive or purse we own, vacations we take. It really doesn't matter when we don't have health for ourselves or our loved ones. When we or someone else experience illness, we will give anything to get back the health and the wellness. But let's talk about this word, this term wellness, okay? What is it? So think of it as a vibrant kaleidoscope of awesomeness. Let's think of wellness that way, where you're not just feeling good, but you're living your best life in all of its technicolor glory. Okay, so maybe that's a little dramatic, but let's go there, right? That's the end of the other spectrum of wellness. So maybe it's like hitting the jackpot in the game of health and happiness, where you're not just physically fit, but you're mentally strong, you're emotionally resilient, socially connected, and spiritually aligned. Wellness encompasses all the wheel of life. I don't know if you've seen one of those things, but if you imagine a wheel, like a circle with lots of spokes, all the spokes create the life, the being that we are, that we have in this lifetime. We want all the spokes to be strong and sturdy, right? So that the wheel can keep turning. And that's what life is, this continual turning of experiences, of time, of activities. So wellness, that is, I think, a great definition of what it is. But what about wellness for us women in this midlife time? this middle-aged area, right? From 40 to 50s to 60s and beyond, being in our second spring chapter of life, whether we are experiencing perimenopause or menopause, going through family structure changes or being an empty nester, we might be caring for elderly parents as well as taking care of our older children. What does the wellness look like or what do we want it to be in this chapter? So I do think that this time of life presents some unique challenges and opportunities for maintaining this thing called wellness of health, of well-being. So let's break it down a little bit. So there's physical wellness, right? How important it is to keep moving, whether you call that exercise or being active we want to be able to still do things and be engaged in life, to be able to move around without too much pain or without any disability. We want to have a balanced nutrition, feed ourselves good, healthy, flavorful foods. We want to have preventative healthcare measures like getting regular mammograms and bone density tests screening for cardiovascular health. We want to make sure that all the pieces and parts of this body is working properly. So there's physical wellness. And then there's mental and emotional wellness is probably as important, if not more, than the physical wellness. Because without our brain health, 
then the body doesn't work very well. So it's very important to focus on and prioritize stress management, whether that's self-care in different ways. We want to be able to find support where it's needed. So practices like mindfulness, meditation, journaling, self-reflection, therapy, coaching, these things can help us navigate the emotional ups and downs of midlife. Then there are hormonal changes, which I guess could also be lumped into the physical wellness part, but this is a very big part of midlife, right, for women to recognize the impact on hormonal changes. When we have fluctuations, the transitions from perimenopause to menopause to postmenopause, we have to manage symptoms that come with all of that, whether it's hot flashes, mood swings, sleep disturbances, joint pain. There's so many things that we didn't expect and we might experience different things as well. Different bodies will show different symptoms and signs of this time of change. Then there's the question of how to age in a healthy way, how to maintain our cognitive function through different activities, learning new skills, doing some brain exercises, getting regular checkups for our vision, our hearing, all the things that come with Again, the age-related conditions. A couple more things around wellness in midlife is social wellness, the importance of connection, relationships that impact our overall well-being. It's been proven time and time again that the quality of life, one of the reasons that people live longer and healthier is because they're more engaged in their communities, that they have nurturing friendships, that they do things with other people, that they have support from their families and their peers. So how is your social wellness? Another challenge that we pretty much all experience, but we don't talk about it much, is body image and self-esteem during midlife, right? With the changing of our bodies, which is completely natural and biological, how are we thinking about that and taking care of that part of us. Is it creating more stress? Is it creating less confidence? How do we work on self-acceptance and loving the changes that are happening with our bodies? There are so many ways to approach these different areas of wellness. Holistic approaches really are my go-to, right? prioritizing the interconnectedness of all the spokes of the wheel, the physical, the mental, emotional, spiritual health and wellness. We can explore lots of different ways maybe that you haven't tried before. So what I do around with using Chinese medicine, using mind-body practices, using the amazing brain that we have to help guide, to help navigate this time of life, integrating all the different modalities that we have, and then finding out what you like the most, what your body likes the most, what you will continue to do. Because it's not about doing something once or twice. It's about creating a pattern and a ritual and lifestyle that you can keep doing that makes you feel your best. The last thing that wellness has to do with midlife is normalizing, normalizing getting older, normalizing talking about how we feel and the challenges and the discomfort that comes with this time of life. So creating a community around it, talking about things that we might feel embarrassed about or shy about, but everybody's experiencing it too. Menopause, aging, parenting, taking care of older parents that should not be stigma. We should really encourage the dialogue and open dialogue about all of these parts of the part of being in this chapter of our life. 
So those are all the different areas of wellness. And I am really excited to bring on some amazing midlife women who are specialized in the different areas that can help us talk about and fix and heal us from some of these areas of our life. I have a breathwork healer. I have yoga instructors. I have Reiki practitioners, mindfulness teachers, and life coaches all lined up for this season. And I might personally come on to share other modalities and techniques that I have found to be helpful for me and my clients as well. So it's going to be super fun. And again, like the last season, new episodes will air on Tuesdays. So you can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or subscribe to my Second Spring Chronicle to get the updates immediately and automatically when a new episode comes out. If you live in or around Columbus, Ohio, and want to come in for an in-person Second Spring session, you can do so now because I am coming out of the sabbatical and I will be seeing patients and clients in person again. I am so excited to do that. I will be working in the Tranquility Room at Danja Yoga in Old Town East. It's a beautiful space and very welcoming community, but we'll get to be in a private room for acupuncture, for reflexology, for mind-body practices, which will be decided amongst the two of us if you want to, if, what you need for that session. So second spring session is what I'm calling my integrated modality, integrated practice. A lot of people know me as an acupuncturist, so you can definitely get a traditional acupuncture session that could include cupping and moxibustion as well. But if you know me and you've worked with me, you'll know that I offer more than that. So I tend to include reflexology. I tend to include a little bit of mindfulness and maybe even therapeutic hypnosis. So it depends on what you're dealing with and what modalities we think might be helpful for you. So that can be booked right now. I will put the link in the show notes for you to find the best time and day for you to come in for second spring sessions with me. All right. I think that's all I have for you today. Thank you for coming back to Second Spring Podcast. Come back next week for a new episode with a wonderful midlife woman and focusing on wellness and the best health for you today and for your future self. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for tuning in to Second Spring Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend and leave a review on iTunes so we can continue to create a community of Second Spring women. To work with me privately, you can go to my website at kityoon.com and schedule your appointments there. I will end here with one of my favorite quotes, and that is, true self-care is not just soft baths and chocolate cake. It is making the choice to build a life that you don't need to regularly escape from. And with that, go take care of you today, and I will see you back here for the next episode.